What is going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 36 of Smack Talk here at SmartOutMoment.com or YouTube.com slash SmartOutMoment. If you're not watching at one of those two places, somebody has some explaining to do. <laughs> I'm your host, as always, Tony Mango. With me, as always, Chris the Dace Man Dace. Woo, woo, woo. You I know it. I, I don't know it. I, I don't know where you're going with here. <laughs> <laughs> Just something I thought of with off the top of my head. You know, I figured we'll try it. Maybe it'll go over with the fans. Maybe I'll make it onto the internet. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, we don't have too, too much to talk about today. We've got three little hot tags, a little bit of TNA talk, and the hottest Divas the Knockouts tournament. But other than that, not a whole lot's going on. Nobody died, thankfully. Nobody's getting arrested, although I'm sure that's going to change by the end of the week. Probably with China. Uh, not, you know, too much going on with a lot of the different companies. Not even a whole lot going on in WWE right now. I mean, other than fucking up and slowly starting to make better the Money in the Bank match. <laughs> God damn it, it looks awful. But uh, Yeah. We're going to rip that to shreds next week when we do the whole predictions and all that kind of stuff. But uh, first things first, first hot tag of the day is what we're going to go for, and that is Rena Lesnar, also known as Sable, is going to be in the Hall of Fame this year, more than likely. And I'm assuming that that's because of their connection with Brock Lesnar this year. Maybe they figured Brock uh, isn't good enough for the Hall of Fame, but his wife is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all for it, though. I mean, they don't have a whole lot of divas that they can really throw into there, and there's. it's always good to have another woman in the Hall of Fame. Like They should really do one woman per year, but they don't really have that many. <laughs> no, not at all. Not, none that have made an impact, that's for sure. No, and I really, I was getting worried when they did the Cindy Lauper and Wendy Richter thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I was getting worried that they were going to induct her into the celebrity wing, mm -hmm. and it was going to be a whole big deal like that. And I wouldn't doubt it. I could see her still going in, just they won't probably announce it until March, or not March, uh, February. I hope not. I don't want to see her do anything again. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Never. It was, it was fun watching her beat uh, Slater in the head with a record. I thought that was cool. Like, realized, oh, it didn't hurt him the first time. Let me fucking kill him this time. <laughs> right. Let me get him to fucking bleed like Ric Flair, <laughs> and maybe that'll work. <laughs> there goes PG, thanks to Cindy Lauper. <laughs> fucking bitch. Well, the other person that they're talking about possibly being in the Hall of Fame is Bruno San Martino. And again, he turns him down, apparently. I mean, there's contradictory reports about it, but it always seems like he doesn't want to be a part of it because he thinks it's too raunchy. And, uh,. There's something saying that Triple H talked to him instead and said, like, uh, we're trying to get away from that, and uh, which is like, oh, really? Because you already have a PG show. What the hell more can you do? <laughs> yeah. I, like, I don't know what they're going to do with it. It's just, ugh. But uh, San Martino apparently turned them down, and there's actually talk that maybe he, like, really disliked Triple H in it, but then there's also talk that, no, he thought he was incredibly respectful, and so there's, like, that 50-50 he said, she said about, oh, he's a douche. No, he's actually a nice guy. Kind of thing. <laughs> well, from what I, from the stories that I've heard that, um, at least from the history between San Martino and the WWE, he's kind of, I think, upset that WWE went entertainment instead of wrestling, and that's why he doesn't want to be in there. Um, I know he's a huge legend around Pittsburgh area, and they all they talk very fondly of him up there. And it's a, basically the comment I kept hearing is, as long as Vince McMahon's alive, Bruno San Martino's not going in the Hall of Fame. That's which so crazy. I would think McMahon's going to outlive San Martino, but who knows? Yeah, because, I mean, San Martino, he's been retired for how many years? And it's usually that kind of a situation where if you retire, you tend to die faster. I mean, it sounds yeah. horrible to say, but... <laughs> The people that keep active are the ones that tend to live longer, and McMahon's seemingly healthy in all uh, aspects other than his mind. <laughs> yeah. That shit crazy, but, you know, he'll live. <laughs> yeah. saying only the good die young. McMahon's going to live until, like, he's 200. <laughs> yeah. He's just going to, like, do some horrible deed each year to make sure that he stays up there for another year. <laughs> Next year, he'll, like, kick a baby, and then... I don't know, he'll cut off Zach Gowan's other leg or something. <laughs> it was me, God! It was me all along! He's responsible for Randy Savage's death. <laughs> Ooh, yeah! That's awful. I shouldn't even say that. <laughs> but, uh... 
No, like with the uh, the Savage Hall of Fame thing where they keep saying that he's not going in there because he wanted to have his brother and his dad in it and everything. That at least makes a little bit of sense because you know that they're not going to get in there without him. So it's kind of a package deal. But uh, with San Martino, I mean, you might not agree with where the company is, but accept the honor. You know what I mean? It's not a matter of them like... What are they going to do? They're going to book you in a WrestleMania match and get the money out of you for it? Like, how can you have a Hall of like that? I I understand his point of view and how he doesn't want to be in there with like Drew Carey. Completely understand, but putting him in there like the longest WWE champion would make it more credible. You staying out of it is why we think it's all a joke. <laughs> right? Yeah. The one they can't get you, they get Coco Beware. <laughs> yeah, it's it's because you keep saying no. We get assholes like uh, Drew Carey, and then uh, Pete Rose goes into it before everybody else. Speaking of which, if anybody's bored, definitely check out the Bobby the Brain Heenan acceptance speech. Fucking hilarious. <laughs> Always good. Heenan's yeah. man. Yeah. But even with the celebrity thing, like the people that complain about that, to me, I don't see think it's that much of a big deal. I mean. They're they're inducted as celebrity participants. It's not like they're inducted as like Drew Carey's got this incredible record in WWE or you know what I mean. It, it, it's just celebrity appearances. It's the same as when you have uh, somebody come out and throw the first pitch of a baseball game. They're not a pitcher. Some little kid does it. It's not like oh my god, my record of uh, one strike. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's fifty uh, percent of the celebrity wing are people who got their ass kicked by Kane. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's kind of just like oh if we ever make a building uh it'll be like a wall next to the bathroom with all the celebrities the celebrity hall of fame is just on fire because kane shows up every day and burns it <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, that's it for the hall of fame to stuff uh next one angelina love and shannon moore have left tna and it seems like love has left because she kind of wants to do something else which a lot of Divas and knockouts seem to be doing lately. They seem to kind of like be tired of wrestling and they want to go into modeling and fashion and acting and failing at all three of those and then going to uh, Ring of Honor like Maria. (laughs) But uh, Shannon Moore just seems like maybe he didn't get a call to ever wrestle anymore and figured, I guess I'm already released. Oh, yeah, I mean, and I think a lot of those guys are biting on the fact that uh, there are rumors floating around that there will be a cruiserweight show and they want to rebuild their Divas division and stuff like that. Because, I mean, Angelina Love would be amazing in the WWE. She'd be the top one of the top Divas. Yeah, well, she would automatically be the top one because there's like three that wrestle right now. <laughs> yeah. There's Layla, Beth, and every once in a while Alicia Fox pops out and uh, mm-hmm. AJ just skips around the ring and... And they don't even. The only problem with like the divas division, they like, it feels like WWE says yes, we're going to rebuild these divisions, and then brings the talent in, just like you know what, uh, go do like a bikini contest thing. It, it's like they completely lose interest as soon as they bring in the talent. Right. How many tag teams do we have right now, and how many of them wrestle in tag matches per week, as opposed to let's just throw CM Punk and John Cena in a tag match? Yeah. Well, that's because Teddy Long's been gone. <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice, though, that this week with the uh, general manager being him, it was all these tag matches? I swear that those guys must read the wrestling memes and stuff like that. Like, oh, tag match, Teddy's back. They're like, well, let's have a special edition of Raw where it's all tag matches, and uh, that's going to be the Teddy Long episode. The one after that will make it all singles matches because it's not Teddy. We'll have to have at least one segment where he's standing and looking at a monitor and doing that little fist bump dance that he does. <laughs> the little, oh yeah. The little holla holla dance. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see uh, Love in WWE. Shadow Moore, I don't really care. <laughs> Been there, done that. Yeah. If they actually do get a cruiserweight division up, he'd be a good jobber for that division. <laughs> yeah, he could be one of those like quote unquote legends for it that like helps a lot of the people like Amazing Red and all that. Yeah. Or Brian Kendrick, I'd like to see him back. And oh, I would love the Brian Kendrick back. Still he doing the Yoda thing, it. though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the people that they're talking about, third hot tag here, may be being released from WWE, though, instead of actually like possibly coming to it, <laughs> is Sin Cara. 
they uh, might be getting a little bit too fed up with his injuries and the suspension that he had and the fact that he can't talk on the mic and, <laughs> you know. Good job, Triple H. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is going to be my first guy. Uh, well, you know, he's going to be going for a little bit because of uh, uh, because of this and that. And uh, Hey, what's Suda go up to right now? <laughs> <laughs> That's what they should do. They should just put Unico back into the mask. Yeah, nobody would know the difference. I know I wouldn't. I'd be like, oh, it's, it's another Mexican under a mask. Is that <laughs> Rey Mysterio? <laughs> <laughs> but he's not doing anything with the tag division with Camacho. Because Camacho's not doing shit. He's wrestled, what, like five matches and he's been in the company a year? Yeah. <laughs> if they can't figure out a way to put him in a tag match every once in a while with Unico or a singles match every, like, ten weeks that he's on SmackDown, then just release the guy. And you know what? While you're at it, release Epico and Primo and Yoshitatsu and JTG. And <laughs> Like... I don't understand their their philosophy. They they released Carlito a couple of years ago, and then just brought in another family member to replace him. It's like, yeah. why, one who why didn't have a, Carlito? One who doesn't have the talent of Carlito. Yeah. So we'll, get, we'll get Epico. He's primo light. <laughs> <laughs> Boring team. Oh god. Terrible team. I don't like them at all. And who knows? Maybe they'll be fired too because it's a tag division thing. So. They won't last. <laughs> yeah. So do you think that Sankara is going to be released, or do you think that they can squeeze something out of him for a little while and then kind of... <laughs> Just because it's Triple H's first product, uh, or project, I don't think he'll be released. That'd be a bunch of, like, the naysayers of WWE would slam him if Sankara is the first guy released. I I wouldn't care, actually. It sounds kind of weird. Like I like the Sankara brand, Mm-hmm. But I don't really necessarily like Sin Cara. Yeah, he, he stopped doing some of the moves that I thought were kind of cool, like that. Uh, what was the uh, Paul Bertrand's move, the C four? Mm-hmm. He he did that off the top rope. That was a good finisher. Now he does another Hurricanrana thing. Yeah, but I mean, like in a year where they didn't do their annual releases, for him to be the first guy to go, <laughs> yeah. they would just be like, "Oh, Hunter, Hunter," <laughs> to the punny. <laughs> Triple H will uh, just fire a bunch of other people to, like, try to hide it. Like, when you throw a little uh, needle in a haystack kind of thing, he'll be like, what's your name? Uh, I'm Johnny Curtis. You're fired. <laughs> Why? Because I gotta get rid of Sin Cara, and he's not the first one to go, you son of a bitch. Right, you're white. We have enough white people. <laughs> as long as they do Sin Cara versus Rey Mysterio once, whether it's at, I don't know, do it at SummerSlam for all I care, you know what I mean? They don't need to do it at WrestleMania. Yeah. Do Sin Cara versus Rey Mysterio. Do the whole mask thing that they wanted to do, where it's how many people can we get uh, to wear a mask to the event. Do that, and then fire him right afterwards. <laughs> yeah. And then fire Rey Mysterio, because Rey Mysterio is being a pain in the ass, too. He's worse than Sin Cara. <laughs> <laughs> At least Sin Cara got, like, legitimately hurt. Rey got, like, a bump, and he was like, Oh! I'm out for a year. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! Oh, God, God. Hey, Ray, you think you're going to be able to return? No, no, no. I, I stubbed my toe on the way here. I can't go back in the ring now. I think i got to uh, go back to Mexico for a while and just, you know, uh, pocket a bunch of royalties. <laughs> <laughs> do you see how grueling the 619 is on my body? I can't do that every night. God, come on, guys. <laughs> well, that's it for the hot tags. Next part, we're going to talk about the hottest Stevens and Knockouts tournament, and then we're going to go to the Destination X pay-per-view predictions and moans and groans. <laughs> Check out part two coming up right after this one.